Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So today we have a question that uh, people often use onion and garlic in their houses, especially during the summer season. They use onion a lot. So can they go to the mosque after eating these two things, onion and garlic? So the answer of this uh, question is found in Hadith. The name of the book is Masnad Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. So this is the name of the book Masnad Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. And in that it is Hadith number 186. You will find the answer for this question in Hadith 186. So what is the answer? The answer is mentioned here. Here Umar Raziyal. This is a long Hadith. It has many other things here as well. So I will not go in detail of those things at the moment. First, I will answer this question. Then we will take a look of whole hadith, inshallah, as well. So here, Umar Raziyallah Anhu say, O oh people, you ate two plants, which I find to be nothing but repugnant. I remember the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa If he noticed their smell coming from a man in the mosque, he would issue orders that he taken by hand and let out to Al-Baqi. Al-Baqi, as you know, is a graveyard out of the Masjid al-Nabi. Whoever must eat them, let him cook them to death. So here we learn few things. First thing that we cannot go to the mosque after eating onion and garlic because whenever any Sahabi, any companion of Prophet Sallallahu used to eat it and the uh, people felt smell from their mouth they will be uh, they were ordered to be taken out of the mosque so this tells you that you cannot enter the mosque after eating onion or garlic and if you really want to use them then you must cook them to that basically it means that you must remove their smell which is either done by cooking and in case of uh, onion you can also do it you can also achieve it by soaking it in the water so this are these which is this number 186 of the book Masnad Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal tells you that you cannot enter the mosque after eating onion and garlic because they have smell and if you eat them, then the smell will come from your mouth, and this will be this will cause some problems for the other namazi, other people in the mosque. Now let's come back to this hadith. <clears throat> this hadith is quite long, so you can pause the screen and read the whole hadith. So now, I hope you have read it completely. <clears throat> so I will tell you some points what are, what is in that. So as we know that uh, Umar Farooq Raziyallahu Anhu, Umar, which is uh, who is also known as Umar bin Al Khattab, was assass uh, was uh, assassinated by a Persian. So before that assass uh, before that assassination, a uh, few days ago. He saw a dream in which he saw that a rooster, a rooster pegged him twice. So from that dream, he came to know that a non-Arab will assassinate him, will kill him. So he already knew this thing because of that dream that a non-Arab will assassinate him, will kill him. So this and this also tells us that Umar Farooq anhu saw a dream and become, because of that dream he knew that he will be assassinated. Then we also come to know from this hadith that he appointed uh, six persons and asked the people to decide from those six persons who will be the next Khalifa. I will not go in that detail at the moment.
then few things are mentioned about kalala as well we will study uh, about kalala in some separate video in detail inshallah because it is a lengthy topic and it is a very important topic that we must learn and understand in detail so i will not go in the detail of kalala in this video then we see that governments uh, employ different governors or rulers or ministers over us so here we have a statement from umre farooq he was ruling a quite a big land so here he says that oh allah i call upon you to bear witness over the governors of the regions for i only send them to teach the people their religion and the sunnah of their prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to divide the fay among them and to be just to them and to refer to me concerning any difficult matters so this is a kind of tells us it's a message for our leaders our prime ministers our presidents whenever they appoint anyone they should also keep this thing in their mind whenever they appoint someone that person must teach people about islam and sunnah sunnah is basically hadith of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this is a message for our leaders that whenever they appoint someone they must um give the job to someone who is who is a scholar as well who must has a knowledge of islam so that he can teach the people religion as well which, which is the most important thing for people especially in the muslims if they don't learn the religion then their next life will be not good unfortunately second thing is fay fay is the basically war bounty so whatever they get from the enemy during the battle they it was their job to divide it justly among the people as well and also their job was to make decision and they were they show they consulted umar bin al khattab radiyallahu anhu only in the matters which were difficult for them to understand so this is the hadith we studied today if you had any question if, if you have any difficulty in understanding feel free to ask me on my whatsapp or you can ask me in the comments below inshallah i will answer all of them in the light of quran and hadith see you next time inshallah ma salama rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim